But first, the cowboy is a hard-working man. Roping cattle and branding them can be really tough work, not least for the cow. But one of the hardest parts of the job is the scorching desert sun, and this is where the cowboy's hat comes in. So how do you make a hat that John Wayne would be proud to wear? Well, the secret is in the fur. Much of a good quality hat is rabbit, but the rest is finest quality beaver. Yes, those toothy little tree-loving rodents provide the important ingredient for making cowboy hats the way they should be. The two furs need to be combined. That happens here. And once it's all mixed up, it's fed into this ancient machine. You may think it looks like something out of the 30s, and you'd be right. This factory in Texas was built in 1938, and the process of making cowboy hats is the same now as it was then. The fur falls into these enormous trays underneath. Now, you'd think we'd be ready to go, but not just yet. There's one more detail to sort out first. If you want to get a tough hat that will survive some cattle rustling, you need the short hairs. Shorter fibers bond better and make a stronger hat. So this machine is used to get rid of the longer fur. They're ejected out of the bottom while the shorter hairs are kept in the mix. Each hat needs exactly seven ounces of the rabbit and beaver mix. It's piled onto this conveyor and then a vacuum sucks it off into a centrifugal vortex. As it spins round, it sticks to the large pillar in the middle and bonds together. Once all the fur has stuck, the workers cover the pillar in a damp jute cloth and send the hat for a bath at 90 degrees Celsius. Without this treatment, the fur wouldn't stick together. The water and the heat help the fibers to bond. Now at this point, you've got an enormous cone, more Harry Potter than John Wayne, but it's still early in the process, so hold your horses. A cowboy hat has to be tough, so the fibers need to be well bonded. The cones are twisted into a cigar shape and placed on these rollers. The kneading, rolling motion will knit the fibers together. Each one is rolled and then bathed several times. By the end of the process, the material will have shrunk by almost 60%, but it still doesn't look very Wild West just yet. At this stage, the hat looks more like something a farmer might wear. But this will be a cowboy hat soon, it just needs a bit more work. But before they start being properly shaped, they need to be dyed. Two and a half hours in here at 80 degrees Celsius will give these hats a rich dark brown color. Now anyone who's seen a cowboy film will know that there are plenty of colors and styles available. It's time to give them their proper shape. No cowboy hat would be complete without a brim. So these machines will help to stretch and shape each one. Combinations of hot and cold water, stretching the material and quick drying mean the hat finally starts to take on a familiar form. As well as its shape, the hats also need to be made in different sizes. There are very few cowboys today who'd be able to fill John Wayne's boots, let alone his hat. Each one goes into one of these machines, which will use a combination of the grips and hot steam to pull it out wide. Once stretched, he will insert the sizing block and the machine will press it into place. Although they work in a tough environment, the traditional cowboy hat has a soft velvety texture to it. Here, freshly made hats are being sanded down. The production processes have roughened the material, so the sanders are used to produce a soft and delicate texture. The only downside is that the sanders leave small felt balls on the hat surface, but these can be removed easily with fire. Now there are two stages to giving a cowboy hat its particular style. The first is the shape of the crown. A series of hydraulic presses means several hats can be produced at a time. The worker selects the mold for a particular style 
He then places the hat and mold into the press and then switches it on. The hat finally emerges with the familiar three dents of the Cattleman style. The other important bit is the brim. They can be quite flat or extremely curved depending on the cowboy's personal tastes. Some brims can be as wide as 10 centimeters. Every year, this company produces over half a million genuine cowboy hats. Prices range from hundreds of dollars to thousands, but it's a small price to pay for protection when your office is the wild, wild west.